What's up everyone, welcome to Agree to Disagree. My name is Chris and today I'm reviewing the newest episode of Girl Meets World entitled Girl Meets Yearbook. I know I missed the last couple episodes, I didn't have a voice for a couple weeks so that kind of affected my reviews. Um, but just a quick overview, I enjoyed the Turner episode even though some people are trying to make it bigger than it was, um, you know, fan theory wise. And I hated the fish episode, it sucked, it was pointless, it just waste. It was just a waste of time. Um, anyway, now we're talking about Girl Meets Yearbook which is Friday's episode um, and this episode the, you know, what this episode was about, this, it really could have driven itself into the ground, like, and gotten really convoluted. However, I thought that it was actually very well done. I thought the episode was very enjoyable. The tone was consistent throughout, which was nice. Um, and you definitely learn a lot more about the characters, not so much through them, but through their actions and what other people are saying about them, um, which is exactly what this episode was about. Um, but as the tone was very consistent, I found it actually very funny throughout, um, and it wasn't some of the stupid funny like they've been trying to do. Um, it's been more of it was more of along the lines of oh you know this is this, and like it just was well written. And for an episode like this where it's all about them finding who they are and kind of thinking about what other people have to say about them, um, as I said, it could have gotten really convoluted, but it definitely d succeeded in staying consistently humorous and having a tone that was good throughout. Um, <clears throat> now a couple things I, you know, want to talk about, uh, first off the writing, I thought the writing was actually very strong for this episode. And I have to say that the character of Maya is definitely the most well-written character on the entire show. Um, she has so much depth to her and that is one of the redeeming qualities of this show. Um, I was kind of seeing her grow and her relationship with Riley grow and stuff like that and how she reacts to things. She's definitely the most well-written character because she's the most dynamic, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Um, so the most... Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to say the thing, same thing over and over. Um, the, ep the part of the episode that really showed that was when she was imitating Riley um, and kind of, you know, the way that she was saying things and then eventually she came to a realization and then she's like, all right, I don't want to be Riley anymore. Like, she got into Riley's head and... Riley is just so oblivious to everything. Um, the fact that she just completely blocked out that whole exchange that she, um, Maya had with Lucas was a little weird. Um, she's like, did anything, you know, did anything, do you find out anything that would have, you know, changed me or whatever? She said no. Um, obviously, she's looking out for her best friend's best interest. Um, so I'm really interested to see if that, what Maya said kind of comes up in the next few episodes, maybe we'll actually get an interesting story arc um, with Riley and Lucas because of what happened. And I'm definitely interested to see what happens with that. Um, some more stuff about this, you know, it was, a, it was a good episode of trying to show, you know, they had a nice nod to the original show with uh, Topanga saying, oh yeah, I was weird and he was celery. A great shout out to Corey having his celery poster on his wall saying, I'm just so plain and there's nothing about me that's special. Um, great way to work that in. I would really enjoy the Topanga scenes in this episode because guess what? They weren't with Augie. Um, all the scenes that Topanga had with Augie just kind of feel shoehorned in and pointless to the rest of the show. Um, but she had some really good scenes with uh, Katie, Maya's mom. And I really hope they do more with that because I like that whole relationship and how they interacted with each other. So I really hope that continues. Now let's move on to one of the oddest things of the episode uh, is Farkle. Um, you know, he kind of like slapped himself in the face in a way. Um, you know, he, he contradicted himself in a way. Um, but it was kind of just him developing as a character. It was great character development in this episode um, that I hope sticks for the rest of the season in some way, shape, or form, because, you know, you have Farkle, who probably did the most drastic change from, you know, little nerd, Minkus son, <laughs> to a uh, cool kid, normal guy, as he'd like to call himself, and then at the end of the episode, he just, you know, he's like, this is me now, and he didn't, he's the only one who didn't go back to his normal self in a way, but it kind of made sense, but at the same time, it was very odd the way that they did it, um, with, you know, Riley coming to and say, oh, you know, I need to you know, this isn't me, whatever, and becoming a normal person because her character development in a way, um, the way that she changed was so out of left field that it made sense for her to go back. But with Farkle, you know, it was just in a way him maturing. And I 
kind of hope it stays that way. Um, it will definitely change the way that characters view him and, you know, how he works into the overarching story. But he was probably one of the more annoying parts of the show. So maybe they realize that and say, okay, this is a way that we can make his character better, write better for him. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, but that was definitely the most, you know, weird uh, thing that happened opposed to, you know, my uh, acting as Riley because that was a little weird too. But that was more for the story. Mick Farkle, on the other hand, was him changing as a character. So I don't know if this character is changed for the good or he's going to change back. We'll, we'll see. Um, if they do change him back next episode, that'll be a little weird just doing something that drastic. And it's like, oh, yeah, we, we didn't mean that. Um, but, yeah, overall, this episode is very enjoyable. Um, some of the best qualities of it were that it was well written. The tone was very good and the character development was awesome. Um, you definitely saw these characters grow and learn more about each other, which was great. Um, downside was just a little bit of weirdness uh, when it comes to the changing of characters. If this stays, then it's good. If not, then what was the point of doing it? So let's hope that, uh, you know, they continue on this path of having good episodes with, you know, the Turner episode two episodes ago. And I, I'm just going to forget about the fish episode because that episode sucked. Um, so we'll see what happens next week on Girl Meets World. And until next time, let's hope we can all just agree to disagree.